and uh, the next one is gradient descent so this is applicable for uh, both uh, machine learning and uh, deep learning as i said uh, earlier so we need to find a best fit right uh, we need to have the minimal uh, error so even if you consider uh, deep learning for uh, gradient descent only you need to optimize let's have we have a gradient descent like this uh, your model initially uh, places some weights you need to go reach this one so you will be training the model to reach this point that is having the minimal error so you will be having some uh, learning rate uh, the amount of information you need to learn at that time so it will keep on uh, decreasing through this uh, gradient descent so actually i'm just uh, using a 2d information i uh, if you consider to an uh, 3d means three dimension it will be uh, full of uh, mountains and uh, uh, valleys yeah, you need to come around and find the global uh, minima so yeah if you have some point means after uh, training in couple of iterations you need to get to the global minima so sometimes you will be having cases like this let's consider this is also a gradient descent you have uh, initially uh, you have the point uh, like this if you go for the minima so sometimes uh, if you didn't set the learning rate or uh, if you don't uh, some appropriate technique means sometimes it will stuck at this local minima so if you take this one and uh, this one means it will be local minima so but this one is the global minima we need to go to this point in order to have a high high performance uh, model so we will be using some appropriate techniques in order to jump this uh, valley uh, to this one so in each iteration we will randomly uh, shoot out this uh, point and uh, to reach this uh, global minima uh, we will see that about uh, later when we cover deep learning and uh, next one is uh, cross validation so we have uh, multiple uh, cross validation uh, techniques uh, the most commonly used is uh, k fold cross validation so what we do is let's uh, split the training data into k folds let's say we have 100 samples we have 100 samples of training data what we usually do is uh, we need to uh, split the data for training and testing so before this we will cover that training and testing so we have 100 samples we will split the data for train for uh, let's say for 80% we will train for the model and for testing we will use the remaining 20% so the ratio can be varies uh, you can use 60% for training and 40% uh, for testing usually uh, i will use uh, 75% for training and 25% uh, for testing that is like uh, optimal values what we are uh, doing is is try to validate the model whether the model is working fine or not so we will be training 80% of uh, data and uh, test with 20% uh, of data so that how uh, we will be using this uh, train and test if you go for uh, training the model and uh, getting some metrics from that so yeah for uh, cross validation what we are going to do is we have 100 samples let's have k equals 5 so we are splitting the data into 5 five folds so let's have 20 20 20 20 and 20 so we have split the data into five folds here we have uh, got 80% of data for training 
and for testing we have got uh, 20 percent of data but uh, if you use only this means we won't know the generalized uh, metric for that uh, particular model because uh, we are not training with the remaining data so that's the only drawback in this so in cross validation what we are going to do is we will be uh, training with this four fold of data and test with this one fold of data so let's say we have a uh, five so five times we, we will follow this uh, approach so for the first approach it will take the first four for training and this will be testing and uh, in the second we will take another uh, four folds and we will take this one for testing let's say for the third one we will take this two and uh, this two for training this will be testing so it's so using it all for training and all for testing just different times yeah so we will be training with the uh, different data and testing with the uh, different data you will be getting some uh, uh, metric each time mm -hmm. so in the end what we are going to do is uh, we will be taking mean of all the metrics we have got let's say all accuracies so you will be getting a more unbiased model because we are we have trained with the, all the training data and uh, we got some uh, metrics from this so what it does is it will give a generalized value for all the models usually uh, you will be uh, doing this uh, in order to find some metrics uh, in order to find the best model out of all the other models because we have so many models uh, even for uh, basic projects, we'll be using around uh, 10 different algorithms. Out of that, we need to find some three best models. So for that, we'll be using this cross-validation scores. So did you get the point? Yeah, I get it. Yeah, uh, it won't like uh, split uh, in a continuous basis. You can also uh, take some random uh, 20, uh, 20 samples for the first float and some other random uh, 20 points for the second fold like that we can able to split and uh, okay uh, this is like a most commonly used a fold validation apart from that uh, they also have another validation what it actually does is uh, if we have 100 samples means it will train with 99 samples and uh, just test with the remaining one sample that's called uh, one less cross validation but uh, this is the most commonly used approach uh, in order to get some decent values. Okay. It's clear.